Whistles. Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. First of all, apologies if you hear any background noise, it's my neighbour doing some building work on his house. Last night I came out into the shed, did one or two jobs and decided to pick up a scrap piece of wood and made this little whistle. If you watched me make this little bud vase out of the pallet wood, I this was the off cut which was on the top and so it just seemed absolutely ideal so hopefully if you can see there close enough you can probably see that there's four pieces of wood all glued together there whistles are actually quite interesting there's a science to them if you don't know how a whistle works it's not just a case of blowing in one end and the air comes out of the top piece here there is a piece of physics going on here of what's actually happening and it's all about disrupting the air so it, it vibrates which is what causes the whistling sound now the way that works is in the end of a whistle we have what we call a fipple that you'll find in a lot of instruments that you actually blow through that's basically designed so that you blow through a flat piece of air and when it comes into the chamber then it's in that narrow band so it goes down the chamber and comes back along the other side so therefore the only escape route is this vent hole on the top here and it's where the air crosses it's fighting with its with the airflow to escape as more air is coming in and it's that fighting which causes the vibrations which therefore causes the whistle there are lots of different factors as to the pitch and loudness and one is changing the fipple and to how much air you actually let in and that tends to be what I've found is, certainly with the whistles that I've made, controls more of the, the loudness of the, of the whistle. What really impacts is this chamber where the air is flowing around. So on this one, I think the hole is drilled down to somewhere about there. When I came out today, I grabbed, and this is a good thing, you can just pick up any piece of scrap wood that you got, uh, anything like that, and you can stick it on the lathe and make a whistle out of it. So. You don't need nothing special you can even use a pen blank if you wanted to so absolutely ideal size so you get an idea of the size that you need and i picked up this piece of oroco here and hopefully i'm showing a video of me making this as i went along and i think initially i started off with it in between centers so i could then put a tenon on it put it into the chuck turn it around and true it up fully for both of these two whistles i have drilled a 10 mil hole and all the way down and it's once you've got your hole then you need to then turn your fipple or you might well have a piece of dowel that you can use and all you do then is the idea is the fipple will i don't know whether you can see there will actually end at the at the point of where this vent hole starts now i've heard some people say that the, the length of the fipple also has an impact as well which I would have thought oh once it gets to a certain size it would have no further impact so unless it's very short to a medium length that may well have some difference but what i've found is that it's really the volume when you actually make the fipple what you need to really do is create the piece so it's a nice snug fit in the hole and then you just sand down a flat edge the best way to do that is to sand a small flat area first of all make sure your fipple is longer than you actually need you can then insert it in up to the point of where it needs to go and then blow in to see what sort of sound you're getting the reason why i say have it too long is because it will probably be a really tight fit and you can then at least grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it out again so that you can sand it down a bit a bit more and then carry on again i've done these all very very basic shapes whatever shape you do really is for decoration what you'll also find as well is that because they're wood they all give that one type of sound but it's just different pictures. Now this one, as I did at Roco, it's obviously a hardwood, and that may well also have some form of an impact on the sound quality as well. And what I found with this one is that the way with the gap I've done with the fipple on here is that you hardly need to blow in to make a sound. So you can blow in it to a really low rate, whereas this one, if I blow at the same amount, you don't get that sound. And I think that's because the fipple, the gap, 
between the fipple and the whistle is actually bigger and also the vent here for where the air is coming out is a lot bigger as well so you need to blow a little bit harder and you get that tone and that's with blowing fairly hard with that one but as i say you can blow gently to still get the sound out of it so i thought i'd carry on an experiment and i picked up then a piece of oak and i decided to go for a much bigger chamber as in diameter wise but a lot shorter so this one again was probably fairly well down the bottom here it's slightly longer than probably that one um, and as you can see it's a lot lot shorter but it's a lot lot, lot wider and again with this one i've got a fairly big over on the fipple fairly big vent for where the air is coming out and as like with this one because of the big gaps if you blow gently you get nothing but if you blow hard it's a lot lot louder but once i'd done that one i thought right well i'll try the other extreme and i picked up another piece i think of as a roco again and i went for this really really long one and the hole in this one i've drilled i got hold of my auger bit and i went for a six millimeter bit so i've drilled literally right the way down to the bottom here and the first fipple that i made on this i decided to go very similar to like this made it a fairly big gap and i couldn't get any sound of it whatsoever so i then had to turn another one this is what it's like blowing fairly low so you still get that sound but you can blow hard and get a lot higher sound Now hopefully you can hear that that's more of a screeching sound so that's where the really like the tone changes on this i've picked up a app for my phone here which is a tuner uh, ideal if you're tuning guitars and stuff like that and hopefully you can see this on here i'll hold this up so that you can at least see it does give a bit of a range with the tones as you go through blowing the whistle so hopefully you can get an idea really of what these are like so i'll start off with the first one i made and I'll go through each one in the order I made them. And as you can see there, that's showing up as a B6. The second one I made, and we've got an A6 there. The third one, the oak one, that's coming out of C7. And then the last long thin one, that's coming out of c2 so the other thing also to do is to consider the volume so i've got a decibel meter here on me iphone as well and if you watch some of my tool reviews this is the one i've used and by the looks of it they've done an upgrade on the app so it does look slightly different but i'll show this on full screen here on the graph so as you can see i'm talking and it's going up to around about high 60s to about 70 decibels so we'll just see what volume these all come out with me blowing them at their loudest So I got up to about 118 decibels there. So that was the one I made last night, and that's just from the pallet wood glue ups. Now the bit of a roco that I made earlier. So that's getting to about 105 decibel, and that's strange actually because the pitch on this is slightly different. It does sound louder. So now the oak one, which I thought does sound a lot louder. So we'll really see what this is like. So again, like the first one, we're getting up to about 118 decibel. Now, I don't know if it's actually picking up on the mic, but this also has a little bit of a fluctuation to it, almost a bit like a referee's whistle with the ball blowing inside. So it's obviously how the air is resonating around the chamber and vibrating. So and finally, the long, thin, high, screechy one. Now, I don't think this one is going to probably be anywhere as loud. It's just the pitch that's really right up there. There you go. So it's about 101 decibels that got to. So I believe that is the quietest. So it's quite interesting that the pitch, because of the pitch, that really goes through your ears. And whereas that one, it's really more of a nice tone. It really is a different sort of project for a change. That's to say, ideal 
if you've got scraps of wood don't throw these little off cuts away keep them because you can make little things like this and if you've got kids or well if you've got kids you're probably not going to make these anyway to give to them if you've got nephews and nieces brilliant present for them for birthdays and christmas you might get in a bit of trouble for her though if you've made any whistles uh please do let me know I'd certainly be interested to hear what your thoughts on it uh, especially like i say the fipple as far as i could find it just alters of what volume you can actually blow the whistle at thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next project video